So we got our reveals up. We started to get inventory November 11th at like 10.30 at night. My phone goes off and I'm laying in bed and I cannot believe what I was putting my eyes on on my phone. This deer is a buck of a lifetime for us and he's tall, he's got everything, stickers, points. I heard one of the deepest grunts right beside me and I knew that it was a mature buck to my right. Come on, baby, go down, go down. If I cross this fence and I walk 10 yards and he does not stand up or he's not in here, we're probably not gonna find this deer. And by godly, I cross the fence you would think that this was made up. I got him, didn't I? Here, re reload, reload. Victory Outdoors, proudly presented by Expedition Archery. So 2020 was actually wrapping up the end of the season and I was just thinking, I had a boy that's just showing a lot of interest in the outdoors and I was like, you know, I'm gonna take him out this year for shed season. Um, it was a really cold, snowy day. Um, there was a lot of drifts, you know, what I mean by cold, you know, you're talking your 50 degree weather, maybe 40s. So I decided to take my father out to make it easier for him. Today is Brentley's first day actually going out shed hunting. We're going to go look for a couple of my hit list bucks. Um, stickers is our number one. And uh, I'm really excited to go spend this day with my son and get him into the outdoors. We went turkey hunting last year one day. He loved it. Um, this year I'm really going to focus hard on getting him his first bird. And also he's going to go deer hunting for the first time this year. So a lot of good things in the books this year that are planned. So stick with us. We will see what we find today. It's been a beautiful day. It's like 50, high of 53 degrees today and I think we're over the cold weather here in Iowa. So we will go see if we can't put our hands on some horns. We was just running the field edges and stuff and the draws and by golly he found his first shed and it was just a great experience. What's going on bud? Get off. Don't touch that. Get off. Show him what you found. Come here. Show him what you found. Look at that. Hold on. Look at this. Yeah. Thumbs up. Yeah. Woo. Good job, buddy. Go ahead and pick it up. Check it out. That's a weird looking one, ain't it? Awesome job. All right, we're gonna keep finding more. He picked it up. We talked about that deer a little bit. It actually had a really good curl on it and everything. And he kind of asked me why that antler was bent like that. And I kind of explained, you know, sometimes they just, when they're in velvet, you know, they get injured or some way like that. And that's what makes them bend like that. Um, and then we just kept going that whole day and he was just staying, being a trooper. We were eating snacks on the four-wheeler and everything. And we ended up finding a lot of our good hit list bucks, um, the four-year-olds and three-year-olds. And um, it was just a great experience. He had a blast with me. Um, I had a blast with him. That's what it's all about is getting our kids in the industry and stuff. So it, I just couldn't have beat, the day was just phenomenal. And there's one set of antlers we did not end up finding, which was stickers. Um, unfortunately, you know, we might have not just, the snow was so high in certain areas, we might have just walked over him or drove over him. But also, you know, I was worried about maybe he got injured or maybe he got killed the previous season. So that was the journey for the shed season and um, had a great time with my boy. What did we just pull it right in front of? Take us to it, buddy. Take us to it. What a day. What a day. What a day. What do you got there? Whoa! Look at that. That's like number what? Seven? Yeah, probably number eight or seven. Wow. All right, buddy. Let's go put him on the four wheeler. Amazing. 
This segment is brought to you by HuntStand. So the main thing this property lacks is food. It's a cattle operation. There's only so many spots we could put food plots, but also I got to get permission from the landowners. So me and the landowners talked and actually they had a couple spots in mind that I could put food plots in. One of the spots was down by the river, which is great. The fence line that keeps the cattle out, it was just a perfect area to put a food plot. But also, you know, that stickers is core area. So I was like, this is perfect. So we put a nice food plot in there by White Gold Products. So I wanted to change some things up when it comes to stands as well, stand locations. I started hunting this farm, you know, on the kind of the southwest side of the farm. And then as I'm progressing and hunting this year to year, I find out that I'm moving more to the east side of the farm because that's where the mo most mature bucks, there's a main draw on this farm. And that just seems like during the rut season, that's where the main ma mature bucks are mainly traveling. We're in here, we're gonna pull a couple stands. We're transitioning to other parts of this farm. Um, we've got our focus on other areas on the south side, so we're gonna get ready to take down this stand and move it to the south. Um, so I've learned to kind of keep off the north side of the farm and keep that a sanctuary for the deer and put most of my pressure towards the south side and then also the east side of the farm. So things are looking up, things are, I've got, like I said, stands in places and stuff that I feel confident in and then also we're putting food on the farm. So things are really looking confident for the season. Hey bub. Yeah, this is comfy. It's really comfy. Nice shade. Season could start tomorrow, we'd stay cool enough. We got the branches cleared for this year. Now we just gotta go shoot our bows. We should have no excuses. So now that I've got the food plots in for spring and then also got my stand set, now it's time for inventory. We gotta get those reveals out there. We've gotta get that white gold mineral out there and start collecting inventory on what bucks have made it through the winter, what bucks are healthy, but also, Give the herd its nutrition and keep the deer as healthy as you can during the summer too. Here in Iowa, we fight a lot of drought when it comes to midsummer. it gets hot, not a lot of rain. So you know, EHD and all that stuff's brought up. So I like to give the deer the most nutrition as I can to keep them as healthy as I can. Number 13. We need like 16 more cameras. I tell you what, for somebody that's not very technology smart, I guess, or whatever you want to say. Um, if I can run them, anybody can run them. I'll tell you that right now. Huh? It's a lot too cool. Yeah. Today we're just focusing on getting camera set up, our reveals, putting out some mineral looks. Um, we're seeing what we got for 2021 inventory. Hoping to get a couple of our hit listers from last year that we passed, it should be hit listers this year on camera. Mm-hmm. I think we're good, bud. I think we're good. So we got our reveals up. We started to get inventory. We got some great bucks on camera. This farm really slow. It starts to pick up towards the end of September, first of October, because it is a cattle farm. So the deer like to summer on other farms around us. So it's not one of those things I really get too worked up when I don't get the pictures right away. I know they'll be coming later in the year. This segment is brought to you by Element Outdoors. As season approached, I was anxious to get in this deer stand. Um, on this farm, I don't get too anxious in October unless cameras tell me otherwise. November 11th at like 10.30 at night, my phone goes off and I'm laying in bed and I cannot believe what I was putting my eyes on on my phone. I have an absolute giant that's got my full attention at 11 o'clock at night, this deer is a buck of a lifetime for us, and he's tall, he's got everything, stickers, points, 
I'm just going back wondering if it is stickers, but then I come to realize that next morning I go hunt, I get back, I'm like, I'm gonna skip the afternoon because afternoons ain't so good on the property I hunt. And I'm going through all the sheds that I found with my boy, this is him. And me and Ian's like, we're gonna be in this tree the next morning. And it was like November 16th. We came all the way in from the west, got to the tree, and I got up in the tree, started to unpack my things. Ian's at the base of the tree, and here we've got a 140 inch buck, dog and a doe, right past the trunk of the tree at 10 yards. Ian's on it with the camera. And we're like, I'm just sitting here like, man, we gotta get up in the tree. I gotta get him up in the tree. Back down here in the OG stand, it's November 17th. And me and Sparks are in the tree together for the first time in a long time. We've got a first northwest wind in the last three or four, probably three days, I think it is. And it's 16 mile an hour wind too. So last time we had this same wind and the same uh, strong wind and the same wind out of the same direction of northwest. We got pictures of DC right below us at 10 yards. Finally, they move on, Ian gets up in the tree, we get all settled in, and it was just non-stop action. So we're just sitting in our stand, it's a nice cold morning, and we finally, Ian finally got up in the stand and got settled in. We're seeing all kinds of good bucks, just encounter after encounter, just not the type of deer I was looking for. Then all of a sudden, we look up on the ridge about 100 yards, and Ian's like, there's TC. Oh my God, that's him. I look up there and I just cannot believe what I was putting my eyes on. TC was on the hoof, and he was bigger on the hoof than he was on camera. and. He was walking the ridge, there was a doe in front of him, and I was like, I needed that doe to come down to me. And she was walking the ridge, and usually what these deer do is walks the ridge, it comes down to the bottom to us. Our biggest concern was, like I said, down in this bottom, the wind swirls really weird. So eventually TC walked to where we lost sight of him and we got a little nervous, but then we looked right in front of us about 50 yards and he was coming down the side hill right at us. And me and Ian was talking to each other nice and quiet, just going through things, take my time, Dennis, just making sure everything was in check. I was telling myself, just control my breathing. And he came all the way down, it was picture perfect. And it was, he was gonna present me a 20 yard shot. And when he got all the way down to where he needed to take about one or two more steps, he, he smelled something he didn't like. And he just turned right back around and walked up the hill and went back over the hill. And then we're like, where's he going? Me and Ian also had a 160 inch deer come 10 yards from our base of our tree stand and you know it's hard to pass a deer like that but also it's easier to pass a deer like that when you have a booner right in front of you um it's, it was a great encounter awesome encounter it's too bad i couldn't get the, the job done but also these deer are are big for a reason and that's you know the journey and the story keeps living and you know it, i hope i hope next year we have this encounter again this segment is brought to you by Reveal by Tacticam. So as muzzleloader is approaching, late muzzleloader, I was kind of confused on which direction I was going to go. I was hoping that TC would show up. Um, one night I was in bed again and my phone goes off. It's my reveal. And boom, I get a bonus buck. A buck I have no history with, a great deer, 160 inch deer, 12 pointer, coming from the neighbors. What, there couldn't be a better opportunity for me. 
I can keep all my deer as four-year-olds and shoot a bonus buck that may never come back. All right, it's December 21st. It is late muzzles, late muzzle order season here in Iowa. Um, I was able to take my son out for shotgun season and get him on his first deer ever. What an amazing memory I made with him. It was awesome. Um, bow season was tough for me. I've still got my bow tag. I'm hoping to get tagged out early with my muzzleloader and go back to bow. There's deer coming out on another blind below me about another 150 yards and I'm sitting here as a hunter like I'm always in the wrong spot. The deer are always a step ahead of me every time this year and it's just been getting frustrating and I'm like just patience and let's calm down. So I just stayed in my chair and it was an hour 20 minutes before dark I heard one of the deepest grunts right beside me and I knew that it was a mature buck to my right. And he walks past our blind and looks straight at us at 40 yards and here I've got a muzzleloader when I still have my bow tag, should have had my bow on me, would have been a great opportunity. So finally I got the gun up when he turned his head just a little bit. I mean it was just, everything was so tight in the blind it was so uncomfortable. You got him. You got him. Come on, baby, go down, go down. Just keep following him, please. Keep following him, he's gonna go down. And when I shot, I knew I hit him really good because the way he took off, I thought he was gonna fall within 100 yards on film. And the deer jumps the fence, I go back, I go to Kurt's house, we put the footage on the computer, we look at all the footage, and now I'm concerned. The reason why I'm concerned is I noticed that his right, his left front shoulder was dangling like this. And I was wondering if I missed the whole cavity and actually just hit the opposite shoulder up high. And now I was sick to my stomach because I had my one chance. I've blown it. Um, I don't know what went wrong. Everything felt great. Besides, like I said, we had to move a little different in the blind. I woke up bright and early the next morning. I got Ian and I got my employee, I got the landowners, and we went from the north side of the farm and walked it slowly to the south. Okay, we're back out here this morning. It's December 23rd, and uh, we're coming in from the north because we got a south wind, so we're gonna walk this easily. Hopefully we just walk up on him, but he's hit real hard, so we'll see. The best thing we did last night was back out and just let him be, so fingers crossed. I know he's in here. I know he's in here. If I had to bet, he's up this draw right here. And I told actually Ian on camera, if I cross this fence and I walk 10 yards and he does not stand up or he's not in here, we're probably not gonna find this deer. And by godly, I crossed the fence. I seriously walked 10 yards. You would think that this was made up. This deer is bedded in front of me at 50 yards. I got him, didn't Dad, I? coming your way. Coming your way! I got him, didn't I? Look like, look like I hit him. Here, re reload, reload. He stands up, it's him. I blew his leg, you can see the leg dangling. He takes off sprinting, I pull up, I shoot him at 60 to 70 yards on the run. Don't know if I've hit him because everything's happened so quick. And I walked maybe another step, pulled my gun up and just kind of glanced the bottom of the ditch and there he's laying. I piled him up. <laughs> Dude, it's been a long season. <laughs> Man, I was like, I, all, all I want to do is body punch him. So I was, I was just like, I just need a body punch him. His bed's right here. Yeah, right oh there. My oh my God, dude. I don't like a wounded deer. We seriously, I walked up this fence line knowing that all the big bucks like to hang out in this draw. 
and he was bedded right there. It's been a tough one, boys. It's been a real tough one. So this one, this is this is good. This I'm about ready to cry. I'll be honest with you guys. This has been a good year. Can't beat a bonus buck. Dunzo, Dunzo, let me unload my gun. So this morning, we came in from the north, got the downwind, basically for two reasons. They couldn't smell us, but also keeping these deer in the center core of this farm. And we had a game plan, and most times the game plans don't happen, you know, come out and be exact, but this one actually was just the puzzle, all the pieces to the puzzle went together. So we, we walked down here, we started to see all the deer, they got up, they started going south and me and Ian went up on this fence line and uh, knowing that this deer from the history that we do have with him just the couple weeks we have is this ditch and above the house so he, we walked up there he stood up like 20 yards from us 25 and I had that was my opportunity and I let it happen I shot him on the run he went about 50 yards and piled up right here so couldn't be any happier man the end of the story taking out a deer that's not suffering anymore as well putting an ethical shot on him but also being a bonus buck, a deer I have no history with, so.